biggest upset in Parliament for years. The scandal of MPs' expenses has shattered public trust and threatens to undermine any future confidence in Westminster. MPs of all parties have been targeted by revelations in the Daily Telegraph. Brown, Cameron and Clegg are all faced with damning indictments of their MPs' profligacy. In 2007 to 2008, MPs pocketed a staggering £92.9 million in expenses. This includes costs for furnishing second homes, office costs, travel expenses and staff. Reader comments in all the national dailies show scathing criticism and, as one frontbench MP has said, this scandal is not going to go away. With more revelations to come, investigations have shown that MPs channeled up to £8 million into employing their own relatives. Keep it in the family, as the old phrase goes. Groceries, chocolate bars, lawn mowers, all are items for which many MPs have been claiming for years. Chief among the violin playing, that's fiddling to you and me, is the second home allowance. The main trick is to nominate one of your properties as your second home while telling the tax man that it's your main home, thus avoiding capital gains tax, or CGT. Here's a quick resume of why this scandal has stuck in the throats of British people, many of whom have lost their jobs, homes and prospects in the economic downturn. Get ready for the usual chorus of, we have done nothing wrong. We have done nothing wrong. Andrew Mackay and Julie Kirkbride are husband and wife MPs. Each claim the second homes allowance on one of their two properties, thus getting two slices of cake instead of one, a trick known as double dipping. Andrew claimed £140,000 on the property he designated as his second home. Sir Anthony Steen claimed £80,000 for having his woods checked for naughty rabbits and foxes. Here's what he said to a TV journalist. What right does the public have to interfere with my private life? None. None of the public's business, says Sir Anthony. MP Douglas Hogg said that moat cleaning was not specifically excluded from MP's expenses, so he decided to chance it, and he very nearly got away with it. Labour MP Elliot Morley admitted sloppy accounting when assessing his mortgage interest. In fact, he was claiming for a mortgage that had already been paid. This could also be called theft. Pension Secretary James Purnell not only avoided capital gains tax by falsely declaring his second home as his prime one, but also took advice on tax avoidance and charged that to the taxpayer as well. Gosport MP Sir Peter Vigors claimed for a duck house, then admitted it was ridiculous and intends to pay the money back. Tory MP James Gray not only claimed for his wife's home while she was seriously ill with cancer, but he callously also claimed home expenses as he moved in with his mistress. We've been stealing taxpayers' money. Communities Minister Hazel Gleas flipped the description of her first and second homes to avoid capital gains tax, but has decided to pay a few thousand pounds back. It's old news that Home Secretary Jackie Smith claimed for her husband's adult videos as well as playing the second home system, citing her sister's home in Peckham as her main residence. Justice Minister Jack Straw has blocked any proposed inquiries into MP's expenses for over two years, hardly surprising them that the public has long suspected they've all got something to hide. Even Chancellor Alistair Darling has admitted exploiting the expenses system and has offered to pay back a sum of money. This is the man who controls Britain's finances. Cameron ready to repay suspect mortgage, says the blur. If he's innocent, why is he ready to repay? What is he worried about? We will pay your money back. MPs say they need a psychiatrist to deal with the stress of all the media attention. The Archbishop of Canterbury has called for forgiveness. Perhaps the Lord will forgive, but will the voting public? The answer would seem to be no. He says nothing is to be gained by attacking MPs repeatedly, but this sounds as if he is condoning their actions. Would this apply to all criminals if they claim to be stressed about their crimes, or just MPs? Former SAS soldier John Wick provided much of the Daily Telegraph's source material. Exposed to its rotten core, he says Parliament and society will both be better places. With the June elections closed, political mistrust has resulted in a massive surge of interest in the British National Party. A fact which strikes terror into the hearts of our Westminster elite, who are fearing for the loss of their comfortable taxpayer-funded lives. They know this loss could be a permanent one. No one doubts there will be postal vote fraud and ballot rigging in order to stop the inevitable surge in support for the British National Party, just as there has been in previous years. 
but the media are all anticipating a huge drop in support for the mainstream parties. In the run-up to the June elections, the media are competing as to who can lie the most about the British National Party. Top prize goes to, yes, you guessed it, the Daily Mirror. Every single day, a new pack of lies and a new lot of propaganda. The Mirror's Hope Not Hate bus is touring the country. Never heard of it? Well, don't worry, nobody else has either. The Mirror uses Z-list celebrities and media non-entities to give it an air of importance, but, like the paper itself, nobody's listening. Let's take a short look at the Daily Mirror's latest brainwashing masquerading as news. First, there's Pete Doherty and Eddie Izzard telling you how to vote. So if you want your child to grow up as a drug addict or transvestite, tell them to read the Daily Mirror. The Mirror knows nobody will believe anything it prints. It will be forever remembered for publishing photographs of British soldiers abusing Iraqis, then admitting they were faked. Countless British lives were endangered by the greed and stupidity of the Daily Mirror. Even now, jihadist insurgents still retain these photographs as part of their regression towards British and American forces. The paper's circulation has never recovered from this and probably never will. The voice of the mirror. PNP tried to sneak race hate chief into Buckingham Palace. Well, not really. He was going to the front door. Nothing sneaky about that. Besides, Her Majesty has had to suffer far worse people at state visits. The voice of the mirror. BNP leader says postman who refused to deliver election leaflets should be sacked. No, he didn't. He said nothing of the sort. The usual mirror journalists were all following their NUJ orders. If you can't find any facts, then just make it all up. Fiona Phillips was especially vile, saying that the BNP are from the dark ages. Some say the Daily Mirror should carry a health warning. If you read this newspaper, you could be poisoned by it. For the Mirror's editors, here's a token voice of the British National Party. The Daily Mirror is a disgrace to this country and everything Britain stands for. The BNP will seek redress from the Mirror's sustained attacks and various libels. Most of these lies come from that fount of all truth, the Searchlight Organisation. And considering its dubious background and its love of democracy, except, of course, when the result isn't to their liking, it's odd that newspapers should give Searchlight any credibility at all. Throughout all these media lies, one shrewd journalist's comment does shine out. It's amusing to see how the main parties use the BNP to threaten the electorate. They need a boogeyman. So if they didn't have the BNP, they'd have to invent us. You can guess who made that one, can't you? We've been stealing taxpayers' money.